Today I'm going to make a quick video on gastroparesis. This is something that I see not super often, but I see it at least once a month in the hospital, maybe a couple times a month in the hospital. So gastroparesis is the slowing down of the emptying of your stomach. And oftentimes that is because of poor blood supply to the stomach. Now, for the vast majority of people with gastroparesis, they have diabetes. And we know that diabetes is um, one of the symptoms of diabetes is an elevated blood sugar over a long period of time. And that elevated blood sugar destroys the small blood um, capillaries in your eyeballs, causing blindness in your kidneys, causing kidney failure in your piggy toes, causing peripheral vascular disease. And another area that gets hit with um, this long-term hyperglycemia, elevated blood sugars, is your stomach. So there's decreased blood supply to your stomach, which slows down the emptying. So um, people will present to the hospital with um, on long-term nausea, vomiting, poor tolerance to food. Maybe they're feeling full quickly. They've had unexplained weight loss. Um, and oftentimes uh, they'll have just a lot of undigested stuff sitting in their stomach. Um, and when they put in a, a tube to suction that out, they find a lot of really undigested food. And um, one of the tests that they can do to look for gastroparesis is something called a gastric emptying study, where they have you consume um, a compound that has dye, and they will do intervals, um, x-rays of your abdomen, uh, several of them in series over several hours and measure the time in which it takes for those the compound to empty through the stomach and they can determine if you have gastroparesis. So for someone that has gastroparesis there's a few tips that I can recommend for you. The biggest one when we're looking at diet is watching out for your fat intake. Uh, high levels of fat actually slow down the gastric emptying. They cause the, um, the pylorus, the pyloric sphincter, the area between the stomach and the duodenum, the first part of the small intestine, um, to actually close up and decrease its rate of emptying. So higher fat foods typically are anything that's greasy or covered in oil, so like fried foods, french fries, deep fried stuff, as well as oils, so things with added oil, cooking oil, or salad dressings. The other area of fat is dairy, so high fat dairy products including cheese, whole milk or 2% milk, um, higher fat yogurts, that sort of stuff. And the third is high fat cuts of meat, things like red meat, um, steak, pork chops, ribs, deli meat, hot dogs. These foods are high in fat and they're going to sit in your stomach longer and be very uncomfortable for you. So following a diet that's lower in fat, all your fruits and your vegetables have almost no fat in them. There's a little bit of fat in things like coconuts and avocados, which you could try in small quantities as tolerated or omit them. There's not really a lot of fruits and vegetables that are high in fat, so you're not really missing out on a lot. All of your, um, your grains are going to be uh, lower in fat. So things like rice and pasta and tortillas and bread, there's not much fat in these foods. But of course, if you look at things like pastries and donuts and fried, fried baked goods, they'll have more fat in them than just your, your plain old grains. Uh, dairy, uh, you could do like non-fat milk or non-fat yogurt. Um, or very, very little bit of like Parmesan or Swiss cheese tends to be lower in fat. When you're looking at meat, you could do things like um, turkey or white fish or chicken breast without the skin. Uh, so there's, um, there's a few options there. So we've talked about fruits, we've talked about vegetables, we've talked about grains, we talked about dairy, we talked about meat. Um, that's pretty much it in terms of the fat content. Another recommendation is consuming a diet lower in fiber. We know that fiber tends to digest slowly and slows your, slows your digestion down. So watching out for really high fiber foods, things like raw vegetables or fruits with the skins on them. So you could cook your vegetables or blend your vegetables. Anytime something's in a liquid or it's broken up like that, that you would find in a blender or a juice will uh, move through your stomach much quicker. So uh, no raw vegetables, cooked vegetables, um, uh, 
and the fruits you could stick to very easy to digest fruits things like uh, melons and peaches and bananas and applesauce would be a, some good examples um, and then you could try a little bit of hummus but beans are typically really high in fiber so most of your fiber comes from your whole grains so you could choose like a white bread um, or like a lower fiber maybe like three grams per slice or two grams per slice of fiber if you want just like a wheat bread um, things like cream of wheat instead of oatmeal you can try a little bit of these whole grains whole wheat pasta whole wheat tortillas typically will shift towards like the white products but the white products aren't exactly good for you either so I would experiment with some of the whole wheat products and see how you tolerate them in small quantities um, but the big ones are going to be your beans um, your whole grains your raw vegetables um, those are going to provide a lot of the fiber that you might find difficult to digest the other option uh, for people or tip for people with gastroparesis is to have small frequent meals so maybe six meals spread throughout the day every few hours that will um, prevent your stomach from filling up too quickly and will allow that food to digest a little bit faster and then you can eat a little bit more um, and so that's always an option too so uh, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any other questions, uh, you can post and leave them down below. Or, and you can check out my website, seantherd.com. There's a contact me section and some extra uh, nutrition-related videos. Thanks for watching. Cheers.